I'm Anna. I'm Ben. We're out to save. Welcome to our channel. Today we're watching Dungeon Meshi Season 1, Episode 5. Last episode, Lyos has gotten a location for us to check out in terms of trying to figure out where the red dragon is, mm -hmm. defeat that dragon, and save Fallen. Fallon. We had a really nice, you know, sharing of food and sharing of information with the orcs, you know, and... and you know, some some come to blows verbally with uh, Marcel and then the leader of the orcs. But, you know, I think that uh, they came to a good place. And Casualties I... had been had, but we don't really care about those people. And we don't know if they're going to be resurrected. It's just a, a bar. That was mean to us. So, yeah. like, do we really care that much? I mean, yes, they gave us what we needed to make bread. But that guy was pretty rude. So. Yeah. Do they even have a chef? Yeah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Ready? Yeah. Sweet. Will we get goblins? Will we eat goblins? I want to see the kobolds. Debate goblins. Nice. White fish. Mm. It's another party. Yeah, and some of them are in the opening. opening. <sighs> いや、カブレ。どうだ、最近。いや。ちょっとだ、ドッグ。まだまだ。つい最近まで火っこだったのが、随分貫禄も出ちまった。一方、ホテルパーティーは。ドッグマン。ドッグマン。案外お前たちみ
All taken care of? Stunning magic. Holy shit. I mean, I would be startled enough by bugs, too. Treasure bugs. Haven't so they're a thing that they know of. Yeah. <sighs> this is gonna be mighty helpful. <laughs> How are we differentiating? Have you ever eaten bugs? No. Not knowingly. Mishua <laughs> Ooh. I bet these taste great. Presentations, everything. Yeah? Because he cooked it. Ah, interesting. Okay. They exist outside of here. Texturally, that did not look yummy. <laughs> あの味味だ。ありがとう。お。うん。甘くて美味しい。本当に美味しそう。気持ちいいで。スムーズ。that was intimidation. Oh, definitely. Yeah! Oh, <laughs> look at her! Yes, give it a name! I need a name name. for it. Oh, serious. The real gems. <laughs> お前の名前はケンスケだ。ケンスケ。急に気温が下がったな。ま、ここ焼けてるのって。ゴース。見つかると and they said about the making sure the other people didn't turn into zombies that she would have been better. Oh no. Oh no. Whoa! So the ghosts are constantly looking for bodies to possess? They're everywhere. あんな派手な魔法しかないのかマルシル。ハリみたいな適当なものでよかったんだが、適当ってあの子がどれだけ高等なことをやったのか。リフガンとアーディンパム。これで大丈夫。幽霊たちはマルシルに。She had a lot of faith in her build. I can feel it. でてきてから吹っ飛ばす方が時間をかけてまた元に戻ってしまうだけ無駄に苦しませてしまう。ああ。行こう。その信念は結構だが、人の体を盗み取る輩には少々仕置きも必要だろう。Like a missing person. So are the zombies those that are possessed by ghosts? Yeah, maybe. 傷つける必要はないから。you might be able to save this person and resurrect them, right? 
Aww. Hugs defeat zombies? She's amazing! That one was badass. I mean, must be to have been able to save everybody, right? Or just give people hugs. <laughs><笑><笑> A charm. Interesting. I was about to say, are we gonna cook for them? Can they eat? そんなもの持ってたの？いや、今から作る世界には様々な魔を払うための伝承がある。例えば火。わあ。闇を払い。例えば塩。薬除けや身を清めるために持っていている砂糖も一応入れておくか。決めが薄そうだから両方。That is the holiest looking water I have ever seen. Hell yeah! <laughs> what a holy sight. <laughs> Were you seeing images of those that are dead, though? You saw your dead dad? Oh. I just had, like, such a vivid flashback from church when they actually do that with holy water up and down the aisles. What is it called? I don't remember. I don't remember. ファリンがいれば<笑><笑> Is it like ice cream or like... <gasps> it is ice cream! Holy ice cream! Oh my gosh! Exorcism sorbet! <laughs> that looks amazing. <笑>今頃こんな美味しいものは食べられなかったろうな。え、それってファリンがあんなって良かったって言ってるの? <笑> <laughs> okay, that was Dungeon Meshi Season 1, Episode 5. What I was thinking of was the Aspergillum. It's this, like, liturgical implement that they use at, like, masses and ceremony where the priest walks up and down the aisle and then dips it, it, dips mm -hmm. it in holy water and throws water at people in the crowd. Yep. You know? I remember hype. that. From my childhood, I do. <laughs> I uh, love this episode. That was so cool. I like I, the idea that you know Fallon's gone, but she was able to offer up so much and leaning into the idea of like, oh, what if she was here? Things would be better. It. I I get what 
you know, Lyos was saying at the end and like the comedic play of there, it being like a silver lining. I, I find that to be true. And in a lot of cases in this episode, especially, it was so cool to see Senshi like just out of nowhere, be able to make holy water out of his own methods that derive, that don't derive from the same magic that Marseille and Fallon would have used, you know? It's how you have to think if someone really had passed on and, and was gone from your life, you need to be able to continue living and appreciating day to day and the people that are still surrounding you while still holding close the memory of that other person. But I don't think that other person would want you to constantly be like, oh, things would be better or easier if they were here. They would just want you to have the memories and the yeah. fondness for them. And I got a little scared for With a the second thing. when Chillchuck yeah. was like, oh my God, I saw my dead dad. I was like, fuck, we're trying to make, like, get to her before she's dead. Are you trying to tell me that ghosts show you, like, someone that you love that has already, like, it's already dead? And now we're getting confirmation that Fallon is, like, legit dead? That being said, we are trying to get to Fallon before she's digested. We can resurrect dead bodies within this world. But we still haven't seen it happen. I know. And I'm like, if we thought all of those other adventurers were dead, like we keep, we've brought it up as an idea that we can, and I have still not been given any like rules or how hard it is or when, what cases you would actually do it in or yeah. not. Is it something that's so uh, powerful that you would only use it on someone within your party and not a random person that you find? Like, it, you, what are the what's 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 if there the was rules? if there was one character that we'd see get resurrected i imagine it'd be kabru the guy that we were introduced to this episode like the leader or at least protagonist of his own party <laughs> and i would imagine that like i don't know he had an energy about him that i would assume that we'd see more of him but i can also imagine that we'd never see him again so okay within the kind of i would say heaven like celestial imagery of all reaching towards you know is the creation of like adam kind of painting you know reaching the hands in the oh in the intro yeah yeah we get characters that we saw you know previously and now we're getting this party but for kabru we also get him big yeah we get him big which means to me and he's higher up He's closer to Senshi and Chilchuk within the, like, group image, which gives me the feeling that at least Kabru will be in the story more. Maybe. I hope so. It's a... I mean, he got a big... What would you even call it? Like, when they're all big and they're sitting, like, you know, at the beginning of the opening. Like, he's a giant in the background? Like, he's a giant... You know, we got him I mean, so like did, that. We so. got that with the red hair girl too, and we only saw her in a flashback here, and she, that she was previously in our party. But we're probably going to get more flashbacks because that's not like the first reference we've gotten to the two ex party members. Yeah. So, just more in the story than this episode, is is my guess. But it does give me the feeling that. Not to get my hopes up every time we meet someone new in the dungeon or kind of like get the perspective of another traveling group yeah. thinking that they will end up being important. It's I, I find it fascinating, like the idea of dis- different dispositions that adventurers have or will take and which one will inevitably be more successful, right? Will it be the person who's like, I'm going to go down there and defeat the wizard. I'm the one. I'm stronger. Is it going to be somebody like Kabru that's like, let's let our actions speak for us. And then, you know, that will do all the talking. Or will it be somebody like Laios who is not interested in that? That's not his number one mission. (laughs) That's not his number two mission. Uh That's like on the back. It will just happen. Yeah. Like I, in my mind, it's Laios because of the fact that he's not seeking it. I think that rewards like that end up coming to those that are not seeking it. And it'll just be a, just something that happens in tandem with Laios's goals or whatever food he wants to eat. What do you 
think of we got a couple of lines of dialogue about like the dungeon kind of acting strange yeah, okay like the layout is shifting something weird is happening do you happening. think that there's like that is the, at the consequence of like the red like is the red dragon moving around to different spots another example of that is that the reason things are shifting is the idea that fallon for some reason being eaten changed something can the wizard sense something awry you know I have to. At or is the like a moment, senshi's like moving around now. At the moment, I have to assume that the red dragon is just another example of how, you know, monsters are like the orcs went up. Like things are dramatically shifting. Like animals or monsters are going into territories they're not normally at. Like they're going up levels, mm -hmm. and so we got that with the red dragon is going up levels, encroaching on the orcs' territory. Therefore, the orcs are then encroaching on what is like the kind of common space for the adventurers, and I feel like the red dragon is it, is lumped in there. Is not the catalyst, but is an example of the shifting. Yeah, but both the why, why now? Like it's not like we've been given some uh, prophecy. Or, like, faded thing that is going to be happening that would uh, make sense to us why things would be shifting now. All we can do is, like, create theories of, like, oh, is it because of Laios and that there's a prophecy we don't know about? Or is it because of something that we have literally no clue about that we haven't been told about yet? Why is it shifting? We haven't really been given... It's prophesized that one day a man will show up to defeat the wizard with his trusty mulliskin sheath. And together it will... Kensky. Yeah, it will be the end of the wizard. And we just haven't heard that that prophecy exists yet. Well, okay, so yeah. Um, honestly, if he's able to befriend and eat, the monsters mm -hmm. and now he has a trusty sword at his side that will let him know of any danger before he even realizes it well honestly that's perfect because it's like chill chuck's role is like to sniff out like traps basically but to have a sword that's able to like especially with things shifting and changing like the dungeon is somewhat of a a science to them at least to some extent of like okay well this floor has already been mapped out these are the sorts of like ghouls or monsters we will fight here this is the spell that we can use against those we're not it's not going to be as uh cut and dry as we thought that it would be if things are shifting so having something by our side that has like this animal instinct of like sensing threat mm -hmm. is going to be incredibly helpful and it has a name now, which is great. Are there any animals or insects that you'd be okay with eating? That I'd be okay with? I don't think there's one that I'd be more okay with eating than, than another. Unless it, like, I don't know enough about what they taste like, but if someone told me, like, this is the one that tastes the best, then Dude, I would say that's slap. the one that I would, like, most try but i would prefer to not try any of them like if you if there was like a big bowl of like salted and cooked up ants in front of us i would legitimately be like i think you'd like this like I, you I like popcorn like salty a lot food. i do like salty food i would just tell you to like think of it like popcorn grab a handful Chow. i'm sure i have accidentally and unknowingly eaten bugs yeah but dude. haven't we all like well, in t like, don't they say that like if you if you're asleep, like you could probably have swallowed some spiders. Yeah, but okay, that's different. Like we're talking like legitimate like cuisine. Like they're like yeah, it's right. it's like very Western culture to be like ooh gross bugs. Like other places in the world have amazing recipes and different I like like cuisines that they've cooked up. Whether it's legitimately just eating something raw or flavoring it in different mm -hmm. aspects, they're it's awesome. Um, one thing that made a lot of sense to me for no apparent reason this episode is the idea that eating monsters that live outside of the dungeon don't taste as good as monsters that right. live inside of it and they're more potent of a flavor if they it, come from in the dungeon. It that makes complete like sense to me. It sounded like they were kept in captivity. Like it sounded like um, almost like trade. Like someone is going down here to to hunt this specific cuisine 
and they bring it back up and like they have it in in captivity almost like a zoo or a farm for these coin treasure bugs and they just don't taste as good as like going out and hunting for the real thing i'm like that probably is the same if you went to the grocery store and you bought like venison it's not gonna necessarily taste as good as like someone going out and like hunting it and then like cooking it up for you i do wonder why like it's very easy to try to like one for one it within our world like are these monsters being held in captivity and like and overly produced in their living environments or like one by one foot like you know but i I, but i imagine it's more like lore based within you know dungeon meshy and it's probably because of what comes within the atmosphere of being in a dungeon you know Mm, okay see i was going relating to real world especially because of like last episode with like the orc kind of the conflict of like being oh but you guys are violent but you guys were violent first and you pushed me off my like land and just like how real world kind of like i imagine it like you like plants do better in sunlight right like putting a plant in a very like shaded no light closet is akin to putting a monster outside of the dungeon so it's almost like it's being seasoned by being in the dungeon yeah that's how i'm feeling about it okay i i mean i don't mind that i like that hmm i mean also because you could think about it like if they have a specific thing that they eat, because it's all, like, you know, food pyramid, it's all a cycle. Yeah. Like, if they are eating a specific food in the dungeon, that would could definitely aid in terms of, like, their flavor or texture or fatness, you know? And then if they are being fed some, like, something else on the surface that's, like, somewhat of an equivalent, it could just be because of, like, what they're eating, even in the dungeon. I wonder if we're going to see more of Fallon, like, through flashbacks. Because, obviously, it seemed to be a bit of just a plot point thematically this episode. But it also gave us an insight of how important she was and how capable she was. Incredibly skilled. It's uh, We got, like, two points. We got why she was incredibly important in terms of, like, strength of the party. And then why she's important in terms of, like, interpersonal relationship and dynamics. Like, she definitely helps others understand Laios better. Yeah. And kind of probably helps him with his connections to other people. Mm -hmm. And then on the, the flip side of, like, strength, if she's the one that can better protect people from becoming zombies or ward off ghosts in a way that no one would ever even try in a million years, like like, hugging hugging them. them. And whispering sweet nothings into their ear, asking for the body back, please. Hmm. I mean, that honestly, that ghost was probably just shocked. The ghost was probably like, that's the first time that's ever happened to me. (laughs) I love the idea of ghosts. I also love the idea of ghosts. Not like uh, if I wasn't on on an adventure, would I want to run into them? No, thank you. But I do love the idea of them possibly you have so many different like ideas of ghosts and spirits like you have like mario ghosts like booze that if you turn around and look at them they won't move towards you but then like we have such like a culture of ghosts that are like talk to us you know like possessions there's over 600 radio waves going inverse and outversely through this device so if we hear more than two words of dialogue from the same tone it has to be ghosts yeah. you know oh i eat that stuff up i, I mean, would that's so love entertaining i like <laughs> this is like a deep cut but like a year and a half ago we were taking legitimately serious steps to doing like a full-scale paranormal investigation on for autosave like we were going to pay money to rent a place that's notoriously haunted overnight and have like film production crews like the, the, just to fill out like a personal fantasy it's just a person it's very personal it to would us get like 10 <laughs> views it wouldn't produce anything it'd be a waste of our savings but it would mean the world to me honestly like it would it would be awesome for us i would be terrified It'd be so fun, though. I would be, like, the prime candidate for being, like... Like, I'm talking, like, home base ghost adventures shit. You have, like, just 
not anything saved. You have to put everything into it. I would be prime candidate for being like, Anna, go be in that room by yourself. Yeah. I would be like, please, no, please don't make me go by me by myself. Please I know. see, but that's not as funny. Like you genuinely it can be, be like, funny. but then you'd feel bad because you're not like an Aaron from Ghost Adventures. You're not like go in there and then you'd be like, what? No way, dude! Like you'd be like, no, I don't want to. I'm gen I'd be like, like, genuinely, genuinely scared. scared, and that's not as that's not as fun. I guess genuine fear is not as entertaining, especially if there are empaths watching. They would yeah. probably feel pity. It has to border like the genuine pain and fear versus like an over eccentric person. So there's that like wall in between you and the, the person actually experiencing. You don't fear. think I could be overly eccentric? No, that's not what I said. Um, okay. Back to the show at hand. Yeah. Um, so zombies, they are corp either corpses or like, I couldn't totally figure out if that person was completely dead after Fallon hugged them. It seemed like they were completely dead. I wonder if you could resurrect them. I imagine that you could as long as their body's intact. And I imagine that zombies are created over people dying within the... Actually, I don't know then. If, he, if people die... I was going to say, if people die in the dungeon, then their body's possessed by ghosts. That ghost wanders around for long enough that the body starts to decompose. Are all zombies in this world actually just ghosts who's, who have inhabited bodies for that long period of time? Or what different, like, what different factor would have to apply to a dead body to make it become a zombie within the dungeon? Is it, like, parasitic? Right. And I'm also wondering, what do those zombies want? Mm. Like, what, what do they want to eat? Brains. Like, does that mean a ghost wants to eat you? If a zombie wants to eat you? Only if that is the origin of the zombie. Is that the only origin for the zombie? Potentially not. Potentially it's something like parasitic, like within the dungeon, if a dead body, if, if, if it isn't taken within... Maybe we got uh, information about it before when we were getting like the corpse keepers. Like, the corpse retrievers? Yeah, yeah, corpse retrievers. Maybe it's like, if it isn't retrieved within a certain amount of time, they become zombies. That gives incentive to wanting to retrieve corpses added. Yeah, I mean, I guess that gives incentive, but they probably also get paid money because Yo. of the fact that there were like missing person posters and it seems like people, adventurers take on missions to retrieve the bodies and or find the missing person. I bet them. being a corpse keeper can be extremely lucrative. The idea of stealing the loot of the corpses that you're getting you're if basically you know what like, you're doing. You're like, here, family, here's this adventurer that you lost within the dungeon. You may bury them now. Oh, did he have anything on him? Uh, no. When I found him, he didn't have no, it, anything on it's him. It's even worse than that. It's like, you know that they can be resurrected. Here's their body. You need to give me ransom, like a reward for finding it and bringing it back. I'm going to give it to you back. By the time they're resurrected, I'm already gone, so they won't like even bother with their stolen goods that still hinges on what are the laws of resurrection anything goes <laughs> lios has died anything is possible i know i know i feel like i need i need more concrete rules i feel like i'm a little kid and i've been given a test and i haven't been given enough instruction on what i'm supposed to be like writing the essay portion about and i'm just sitting there staring at it like what exactly do you want me to do that's how i feel a little bit make your own rules but it's enjoyable i'm yeah. okay to i'm glad to be here <laughs> <laughs> all right that's all i have you yep thank you guys so much for watching this video please like comment and subscribe and we hope to see you next time